Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. President. And uh, let me start by thanking the organizers for inviting the uh, Emirates Diplomatic Academy, someone from the Emirates Diplomatic Academy, to join you in this uh, discussion. Uh, but also to thank them in general for their convenient capacity. This is a great gathering uh, and, and a great subject uh, for the world. Um, very briefly, I think you all know uh, our guest. Uh, let me just enhance that apart from a great politician and his uh, political experience, he's a scientist himself. He's a physicist. Uh, he was telling me before the only physicist uh, who is a president uh, uh, in the world. He's a computer uh, scientist, if I'm not wrong. He has also a long diplomatic career. He opened the Armenia Embassy in London. He's been a prime minister. He's been a president. He has also very important academic uh, endeavors in, in his uh, background, uh, including uh, places like Cambridge or Harvard. So, Mr. President, thank you very much. We're very honored to, to have you here today. We have a short time, so I would like to uh, focus our conversation on three uh, main uh, topics. Uh, one is a political uh, question. The second one is more an Armenia-centered uh, question and your experience on sustainability. And the third one on education. Let me start with the political one. We all know that uh, uh, this uh, challenge uh, of sustainability uh, requires uh, the uh, integration of different views, different sectors, and we live in an era of uh, polarization. We see many politicians uh, uh, around the world working on, on polarizing societies. Uh, you are a different personality. You are a personality of integration, of inclusion. And I wanted to ask you uh, how political leadership can help to integrate the different views and the different sectors in society, uh, public opinion, corporations, uh, academy, uh, to work in favor of sustainability? <clears throat> well, it's, uh, first of all, how short is short time? <laughs> and as, as you know, short is relative as well, so I'll try in a short time, be brief, but it's, it's not easy. Uh, sustainability, first of all, what's the definition of sustainability? Uh, sustainability 100 years ago, 50 years ago, 30 years ago, today are two different things. Secondly, so sustain, uh, sustainability is a, is a function of time. So if, well, if we want to think about sustainability of a country, region, uh, um, area, or, or the whole globe, we have to, first of all, uh, go back into the future. In, let's say 10, 20, 30 years time, see how the world will look like if we'll continue living the, the life that we're doing now. Come back, have a target that we would like, for example, to reduce the carbon, or we would like to achieve this or that important goal, and then have a plan, strategy. If you're a country, laws, implement that. It looks easy talking about that. In reality, it's quite complex but because sustainability is not, only, is not only a function of time, but it also has many components, as you were mentioning yourself. It is designed of the fabric of the nation, the stage of your development, the stage of, the, your, uh, of your, the way you manage the country, the way the people are ready to be joining, the way the businesses are now. And one thing that we have to keep in mind, very, very important, that we are on the crossroad. This is not a simple time. This is not 30 years ago, when everything was more or less clear. The world was run by investment bankers. The world was prospering. Everything was in growth. Or you go back another 30, 40 years' time, there were two superpowers, and everything was more or less classical. I would say that we are living in a quantum world, where there is less predictability, and every small unit, including small countries like Armenia, could have an impact, could be successful. Another example are the successful countries in the Gulf, including UAE, small but powerful and very, very successful. 
it goes down up to individuals. So the individual power grows. So when you are speaking about sustainability, you have to look at the fabric of a nation. In a, in a place like Armenia, we have a specific fabric. When I became uh, president uh, approximately two years ago, in two, three weeks' time, we had a revolution, and we had a change of the prime minister, from the former president to a, a young uh, politician and a journalist that became the next prime minister of, of Armenia. And Armenia is a place where individual power is quite strong now. Not only it's a small, small uh, state relatively, but big nation, worldwide nation, but it's individual power. So it's highly technologious, technological country. People's connectivity through Facebook, Twitter, and other is very, very high. So the society is very much involved. So when you think about sustainability, there's a lot of activity, for example, in several sectors like mining, and people are concerned about damaging the nature or about the high level of carbon in the city and so on. So you have a society which is very active on its own. You have businesses that have a specific interest. You are in a transition as a state because from a, from a former government, you are going to a new government. So it's a quite a complex issue. But if you have a clear vision where you want to go and where we, what you want to achieve, I think you can manage it by creating harmony between the dif different parts and, first of all, engaging people. I think talking to them. And especially now, it's much more easier. You can talk to people every day. You can engage them. You make them a part of a solution because they are a part of the problem. They are creating, in many ways, the problems that we are facing. Secondly, sustainability is not about having something that is not, is not moving or gives us a comfort. We have to create sustainability in a world which is unpredictable. But the beauty of that is that sustainability in the times of un un unpredictable world or times means also the time when if you are, if you have the quality of adjusting yourself, adapting yourself, making your moves and decisions quicker, then you will succeed. So sustainability in the new world will mean also development and opportunity. So for a country like Armenia, it's a wonderful opportunity to take this country to the next phase, to do a phase transition, to jump over, because if you focus on new technology, new way of running your country, first of all, you will you will solve a lot of problems related to the nature and, and climate. Nature and climate are problems that we are facing are the results of the historic first, second, third industrial revolutions. When we're discovering the nature, understanding the nature, in the meantime, learning how to burn and get energy, learning how to use electricity to become more powerful, and learning how to make, use computers to become more powerful but in the meantime, damaging the planet. Now, the solution is, first of all, I think we have to use the same technology, and we have the technology today, we have damaged the planet. But now, the positive side of it, that we have the technology, that we can use the solar energy. In a couple of years' time, hopefully, we'll have the nuclear fusion. New type of energy, which will be in every country, in most of the countries, we can have small suns giving fantastic energy. So they are technological solutions. Our gadgets are becoming much more powerful from the point of view of their, of their sort of application or impact, but much, much, much less powerful from the point of view of using energy. So our life is becoming, we are on a crossroad to a new world. And if we look at the sustainability, it's all about vision, development, and opportunity. And of course, in, on this path of to the future, the most important value is going to be our human value, our integrity. Because any technology, any technology could be doing good and bad, could be fantastic opportunity for development of human mankind, and it could be a danger. The nuclear energy is something which is more or less renewable, 
although we have to learn and exactly apply how to manage to spend nuclear fuel and uh, nuclear waste and to make the nuclear power plants absolutely safe. But on the other hand, the same energy, the same technology can create hell. And we have seen that years and years ago. So it's morality and integrity of humanity becomes crucial because the tool of progress, the tools of sustainability, development, opportunity are becoming more and more powerful. This is not the human thousands of years ago with, with the hammer. This is a human with huge, huge power in his hand of every individual. Let me dwell on Armenia. Uh, you have mentioned the role of countries like Armenia and the UAE, and, and I would like to ask you, uh, you, you said once that uh, you represent a small country, uh, but a global nation. Um, this uh, undoubtedly, uh, among the challenges in the, in the 21st century, the most global one uh, is uh, sustainability, is climate change. Uh, what is the role of small countries here? Well, I do believe that the world is becoming, uh, the world will, will become not uh, one polar, two polars, three polars. Uh, obviously, we'll have uh, great powers there, be that United States of America, be that growing power of China, original powers or great powers like Russia or European Union, if they will maintain their economic and political integration intact and so on. There are other powers as well and in Latin America and so on. So, yes, but the world will become really multi-multipolarized because in 21st century and beyond, when technology, as I said, is becoming very powerful, when time is of essence, when innovation is power, when individuals become power, powerful, when a startup com be can become a multi multi billion company, not the tra traditionally developed classical company, the same way in this new world, the small can be not only beautiful but also powerful. So it will all depend how well organized you are, how well connected you are, how, how far you are in the avant garde of development in technology how far you are developing in the way you manage your, your, your efforts. And of course, one component, if I take my own country, which is a small country, but much bigger nation, we will have today in 21st century advantages. And one of the advantages is what we're globally integrated or connected uh, uh, nation. So if you think about Facebook or Twitter's, or uh, any other professional network. There is another one for Armenia, which is the national one. Because people are interested in what is happening in Armenia, starting the ones that live in, in Argentina, Spain, in, in, in California, in Moscow, or indeed here in Middle East, in Beirut, or, uh, or in UAE. They are interconnected. Most of the people, because of the long history and the history of Armenians abroad, these are people either uh, traders, scientists, professionals, some politicians, and because they are interconnected or they are connected with their ancestor, with their homeland, historic homeland, uh, we see the results that a lot of them uh, have the desire of, of giving an input. So this is an advantage. If you want to sell something, you need, you need a network. So there is a global network, three, four, even five times more Armenians live abroad than in Armenia. They have different cultures, they bring different knowledge, so they can make the country, the country really uh, successful. They can have their added value to our success. Mr. President, you are a scientist, you are a physicist, as we said before. You have also, uh, apart from your political life, uh, had a long academic uh, trajectory, including uh, being an advisor at the uh, Kennedy School of Government at Harvard. And uh, 
this combination between uh, academy and public policy uh, leads me to, to ask you, what's the role of education in public policy? What's the role education can play to make societies more sustainable? Well, I, I think uh, education is the basic necessity. And when I speak about education, I'm, I'm not speaking only about school education or university education or further down. First of all, we have to realize that uh, we are who we are because what we have learned during our lives. The moment as, as, as a globe, as a humanity, we stop learning, our human history will be finished because this is the fundamental way of progress, learning. What is changing now is that education is becoming not only a business, a very sustainable and interesting business that one can make a lot of money. It is also becoming an integrated part of our development. There is no way you can develop technology without a very strong educational system. You can have one of the best labs in the world. You can have the Harvard University, as you mentioned. But if you don't have young, highly educated s supply of students, you will never succeed. You can have the best company in the world. You can have Google. You can have Dassault, Thales, or any other big company. The problem today for them I, are, is, is two for the big companies. How to harvest the creativity of an individual? Because the classical way of getting the, the top engineers, educating them, bringing them step by step up, 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 sometimes doesn't work. Because in the 21st century, this is a century of startups. It's a startup century. And the world is a startup. So you have to harvest the, the pure energy of knowledge and, and, and innovation of young people. So inside these companies, you have created uh, environments where they will come up with a startup idea for a big company as well. So education is mixing with production, innovation, business, and the way we teach. We have to rethink the way we teach. Because classical way that we're teaching, ch taking children to school, spending every 14, five months, can you imagine today a young boy or a girl of this age that has started her or his life with an iPad, with a huge amount of information, with the speed of changes in their lives, just sitting 45 minutes like this and just repeating something? No. Sometimes I see these children, small, they, they, cannot, they cannot stand, they cannot see, they can stand or see 15, 20 minutes. And I hear from their teachers, ah, they have some problems, psychological or health problems. No. These are the children from the future. I don't want to repeat the names that they give to these children. Because these are the children that are overwhelmed with their energy. And there are more and more of these children. So we have to reinvent the way we educate children by making that education much more precise, quicker, maybe shorter in time, because the information that they get is... Com you don't go to school to know where is Paraguay and what's the capital of Paraguay, because it's in your Google. Tomorrow that Google will be a part of your body. So you go, you, go, you get your education in order to start learning to how to analyze, because you will always have near to your uh, natural intelligence, someone who is called artificial intelligence that will help you, that will provide you the basic analysis. So your power is how you take it, how you make it out of it, something really new or powerful. In everywhere, the way you make shoes, the way you fly the space, the way you, you cook your food or produce your, your apricots. I mean, artificial intelligence is going to be everywhere. So we have to rethink, again, what is education, how we teach people. The classical university thing is great achievement, but it has its needs. It needs reforming. Look at the new generation of billionaires in, in IT sector. 
most of them didn't have the time to graduate the university because they were too fast, too quick. They had the idea to implement that. Mr. President, thank you very much for your wisdom, for sharing with us these ideas about the role of leaders in reaching consensus and building consensus in, in uh, your view about uh, integrating all countries in the conversation. Uh, and we know that Armenia is playing a big role like the UAE is doing and your final reflection on the younger generations and, and education. Uh, I keep your idea that we have to reinvent the way we educate if we want to be successful in sustainability. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. I, to finalize, I, I would say that in this new world, everybody has an opportunity, the big and the small. And the small can be very successful, both individually and the states as well.